What could be more refreshing, nutritious, and keto friendly than a salad? And what other salad could immediately transport you from hot and stuffy suburbia to a breezy private island paradise luau than delicious poke? Stay with us for our family's favorite poke salad coming up next. To date, I've lost about 50 pounds going low carb. Now that's a lot for me. One of the keys for me has been not trying to make keto or low carb something that it's not. In other words, some things are incredibly delicious without any need for carbs. Other things just aren't the same without them. So one thing I found helpful, find things that lend themselves perfectly to the keto lifestyle, like poke salad. Let's begin. First of all, let me say that although my parents did spend a number of years in Hawaii, I cannot claim that this is some secret recipe handed down to my big kahuna surfing grandfather. Wouldn't that be a story? Honestly, this is simply a combination of flavors that we love the best. Feel free to change this to fit your own personal tastes. That's one of the wonderful things about a poke salad. This is simply what we like. These are some things, some usual suspects that I use. Okay, do you need a special knife? No, you don't. As long as it's sharp. I'll be honest with you, I do have a sashimi knife, but oftentimes I just use my good old Chinese cleaver. You can use a fillet knife, and that'll take you from fish all the way to poke. Let's take a quick look at some of the ingredients that we enjoy. First of all, there's the fish. Now, traditionally, one uses ahi tuna. There's really good reason for that. Tuna being heavier than water, need to be continually in motion. They need to swim. It's very hard for a parasite to latch onto something that's going 25 to 50 miles an hour. So wild ahi is parasite free. It also tends to be rather expensive. Now, a word about sushi grade. Did you know that there's actually no such government regulation? Sushi grade is a label your retail outlet puts on the fish to encourage you to buy it and eat it raw. Here you see two grades of ahi. One, a deep rich maroon, wonderful, imported from Hawaii. This is the good stuff. Right next to it, you see something that quite frankly, has been frozen and subjected to carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in order to preserve its color. Now, as a result, it turns out an unnatural way over the top red. Now, why would you mix expensive tuna with inexpensive tuna? Typically, you might not want to, but I found a way that makes this combination work, at least for me. I simply sear it and put a nice crust on the lesser grade of tuna, in this case from Indonesia. Next to it, we have the farmed salmon. Now, if you're cooking the fish, wild salmon is by far, in many people's opinion, superior. You can plank it, you can grill it, you can pan fry it. Wild salmon will give you superior flavor. It will give you superior color. It will give you more omega-3s. But if you're eating it as sashimi, you actually want a good farmed salmon. My fish market assures me that the farm in which these salmon were raised uses a very high quality feed that floats. Why is this important? because if it floats, it keeps the fish off the bottom and thus free from parasites. I've read that the official government recommendation, if you're concerned, 
is to simply put the fish into your freezer for seven days and it should be fine for raw consumption or ceviche. In any case, there are three types of fish that we like to use. Silky, buttery, fatty salmon, charred and crusty seared ahi, and some of the good stuff, imported ahi from Hawaii, never frozen. Then there are the usual suspects for flavor and color and crunch. In our case, we like to use chili flake or chili powder. We love, or at least I love, tobiko, flying fish eggs, or if I can't find it, masago will do just fine as a substitution. A little bit of wasabi, though my wife prefers them on the side for dipping, and roasted toasty sesame seeds, a high quality sesame oil, grated ginger, scallions, or green onions, white onion, is my favorite, but you can use purple or red, nori or wakame, cilantro, edamame, which, by the way, is keto friendly. Freshly ground black pepper and a good soy sauce, especially designed for seafood, is nice. I suggest sea salt or even smoked salt. Delicious. Now, sometimes that is the way to go. If you want your poke salad lighter in color and brighter, use sea salt instead of so much soy. Use a smoked salt to give it a wonderful smoky background. Lastly, we love to add cucumber. My favorite is a Japanese cucumber. There's a reason for that, and this is why. I like a crispy, crunchy cucumber, and I don't like bothering with the seeds. Maybe it's because I'm Chinese American. I paid for it. I don't want it to throw it away. <laughs> I find that regular cucumbers get kind of soggy too fast, and the seeds have way too much water content. And so, Japanese is my favorite, if you can't find it, look for a Persian or even an English. Okay, let's put this thing together. First of all, let's talk about the more inexpensive, affordable ahi. A lot of times you can find chunks of this ahi frozen solid and they come from places such as Vietnam or Indonesia, they are wild caught. And honestly, by the time you thaw them out, you're not going to find the most delicious mouthfeel, that subtle melon-like quality of a good grade ahi. It will have an unusually over bright red color. But like I told you, let me share with you my little secret for making it not just palatable, but delicious. I simply sear it, put a hot crust on it, either on a hot mesquite grill or a searing hot iron skillet. Once I got that nice tasty crust on the outside, I can season it with salt and pepper or even use our favorite technique of ginger and green onion hot oil treatment. Now that's not for your hair, man. It's a cooking technique common in Cantonese cooking. This is how I do it. First of all, I take an iron skillet and make it as hot as I possibly can. I put in a little bit of high temp oil, such as avocado or peanut, sprinkle a little bit of salt to enhance the browning, and sear it. In this case, I often don't even thaw out the fish. Actually having it frozen solid helps me because I can get a more aggressive sear and rest assured man, that the middle is still cool and rare. But just in case, to ensure I stop the cooking when I want it, I have a bowl of ice water nearby, a quick little dunk, 
and it stops the cooking process cold, <laughs> no pun intended, and leaves the middle perfect. Now, if I was eating this seared ahi by itself, and sometimes I do, I would season it with salt, pepper, soy sauce, and what we like to term shock and awe sauce. <laughs> what is that? That's the ancient Cantonese technique of hot oil. We heat up oil to the smoking point and pour it over the aromatics, such as ginger and green onion. Oftentimes, I add garlic, jalapenos, chilies, and even Szechuan peppercorn. The seared ahi can then be cut up into bite-sized chunks and combined with the salad. Fortunately, making this salad isn't really rocket science. You don't need to follow a complex recipe or a pattern or an order. You just combine the tasty ingredients. Like I said, I prefer white onion for this application as opposed to yellow or uh, even red onion because it's relatively pleasant eating raw and it's nice and crunchy and juicy. On a side note, if you notice here that my left hand has a rather strange knife technique, it's actually because I suffered a stroke about two and a half years ago. I came home in a wheelchair with my left hand limp and lifeless. I consider it a blessing and an answer to prayers that I can function as well as I do today. If you would like to find out more about our crazy journey as a family through this difficult time, check out our links below. But on with the poke salad. Like I said before, get yourself the crispiest and crunchiest cucumber you can find. In this case, I had to use an English cucumber and also add yourself some tasty edamame. This gives your salad wonderful texture, crunch, and color. Now you can buy them in the pods, boil them in salt water, and shell them yourself. My boy likes to eat them out of the shell, but I simply bought the frozen ones and tossed them into the pool. On the day that we made this, I went next to the green onions, or as some say, scallions. After that, ginger. Now, some people don't like to bite into a chunk of raw ginger, and so you might want to finely grate the ginger, but you know, I'm not a fan of bloody knuckles, especially my own. So this is how I do it. I peel the skin off the ginger with a teaspoon or a butter knife, and then I cut the ginger finely into matchsticks. If you find fresh ginger, a little too intense to eat raw. What I do is I extract the essential oils with smoking hot oil. I take the aromatics and I pour smoking hot oil over it, or in this case, I put the aromatics in the oil. I drain the oil, use it as a dressing for this delicious salad. In fact, I tell you, I make my own green onion pancakes for my kids, but you know, they don't like the little bits of green. And so when I make the green onion pancakes, I have to extract all that deep flavor from the scallions and get it in there. And so this is what I do, because they love the taste, but they don't like to see the green bits. Go figure, right? Anyway, getting back to the poke, I wash and chop cilantro and put in some type of seaweed, such as a roasted nori, or if I'm lazy like I was today, I just throw in some dehydrated wakame. I put in a soy sauce, especially favorite is one made for seafood, and of course, the chunks of delicious fish. Now. I've seen some poke finely diced so that it's very elegant and easy to eat. It comes out looking like a cross between a cob salad and a chirashi. But we like it extra chunky and so we go big. 
Now, because the aromatics have already been softened, I just toss them in, give them a little mix. Honestly, I usually ask my wife to put on a pair of gloves and gently mix this. But this time, I just use a gentle spatula. We serve it on a bed of lettuce, some shredded cabbage, or maybe some heirloom tomatoes. But if you're a lucky person who's so slim that you don't need to go low carb, you can help yourself to some yummy sushi rice. <laughs> and there you have it. Cool, creamy, buttery, silky, crunchy, chewy, refreshing, delicious, and meaty. With a heady fragrance of sesame, spicy chili, and wasabi. You can't beat this on a hot day. Hey, we even eat this in the middle of winter. I hope you try this for yourself and enjoy. Last time I paid for pokey, I tell you, was the very last time I paid for pokey. I was shocked at how much they charge. You know, if you try this, leave a comment below. Tell us if you liked it and tell us if you incorporated some creative variations. A couple of things you might like to add is sesame seed, crispy fried shallots, or fried green chilies, maybe French fried onion, yum. And of course, you can make it as spicy as you want with sambal, sriracha, or even ghost pepper sauce if you're a chili head. <laughs> bon appetit, or should I say, mahalo. You say it. You should say something. Okay, alright. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Ring that bell.